Today, May 1st, 2020 marks another anniversary of the International Workers' Day institutionalized and dedicated to the celebration of the working class across the world. Traditionally, the day would have been marked in country after country with various ceremonies, parades and other activities aimed at accentuating the critical role which workers play. But the outbreak of COVID-19 has significantly robbed the day of its glamour and funfair across the world. And joining us now via phone is Comrade Onyeka Chris, Deputy General and Secretary of ULC. Good morning, Mr. Onyeka. Good morning, good morning, my sister. And it's good to have you today. Now, uh, it, now the outbreak of COVID-19 has influenced virtually every human activity. How do you yeah. feel celebrating Workers' Day without the usual glamour, parade, and funfair? Uh, yeah, it, it is an unusual May Day. Uh, but uh, as we have said, global workers, workers all over the globe, are always on the front. And so this May Day, we are celebrating it on the front line. We are celebrating it in the trenches, mm. celebrating it, combating COVID-19. And so we are celebrating it, doing what we know how to do best, defending the peoples of the world mm -hmm. and creating wealth and ensuring the survival of humanity. Yes, it lacks the usual glamour. But to us, we are fulfilled. We are satisfied. Because this May Day has come to demonstrate to the people of the world of the centrality of, and the laborer and the labor as the key fundamental in global development. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nyeka. So it is clear now to everybody, to every facet of the globe, that labor is a key factor of production. The only thing that is needed for the world to continue surviving. And that is why, that is why we are glad, uh, no matter the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So the glamour is not there, but there is glamour in our hearts. All right, what are the activities earmarked uh, to, to celebrate this year's Workers' Day and how effective would they be, and if, if there are any even? Yes, we, like I said, we are celebrating across the globe, across Nigeria, in every state of the Federation. But we are celebrating it in a different way. Because of the context, the objective realities of the moment, we have also designed it in such a way that we reach out to ourselves wherever we may be, across social platforms, social media platforms, then across uh, all the all, all the nooks and crannies of the nation. Right. And so as I speak with you now, I am in a platform engaging from all around Nigeria, okay, on the realities of our time and the best way, you know, to handle what has faced uh, our workers. All so right. we are celebrating it. We have released uh, major messages that have been spread across. We are speaking to the media like I am doing to you now. By 10 this morning, there will be a national media briefing at the national level. So we are celebrating it. All right. So it is not going to be as, as elaborate as it used to be, but we are celebrating it. On a day like this, it is also critical to look at or talk about the welfare of Nigerian workers. What's your assessment, yeah. especially during this period of COVID-19 lockdown? Yes, yeah, it is uh, that is that we, at this time, some employers of labor, both public and private, if not checked, we begin to act with impunity so that we impact the, uh, the welfare of workers. Now, if you look around what is happening in a place like Tuna, where the state governor just woke up and you literally said he's cutting, making deductions from workers' salary, that is impunity. And what some people that are uninformed we begin to do at this particular point in time. But it's unacceptable. And so welfare of workers generally will be impacted, but depends on our response as trade unions, on our response as workers. It depends on our re on response as government, as regulators, to ensure that workers are protected. 
Workers are the ones at the front line. Look at journalists. They are workers. They are moving all around. Why many people are staying at home? They are risking their life. Look at the health workers, the aviation workers, the dock workers, the electricity workers, the oil and gas workers. They are all risking their lives, keeping Nigeria going. And for anyone to begin to think of undermining their rights and privileges at this time, that is very, very wrong. And that brings and me to my next question. Is not impacted negatively. All right, that brings me to my next question, Ms. Onyeka. Uh, how do you intend to bring the, you know, to the, the attention of the government to these needs that, of workers that you have highlighted and they applied, you know, now that the government intends to relax uh, the lockdown next week? Yes, uh, we have articulated our positions and we have sent it through the normal channel to the federal government. We have made some proposals and we are also engaging them to ensure that uh, multi-level uh, conclaves mm. are set up across Nigeria so that we will discuss the issues that affect Nigerian workers during this COVID and post-COVID. Okay. It is important that we do all this so that whatever is going to be the outcome or whatever is going to be the strategy post-COVID and now will be something that is negotiated and agreed upon. All right. all the social partners. Before I let you go, the, the COVID-19 pandemic seems, seems to have uh, shifted the attention from the issues of minimum wage. Are you concerned that this might not be given much attention with the present realities? Every, every, every worker, every responsible trade unionist all over the world he has his eyes focused on the issues that affect their members. We at the United Labour Congress of Nigeria, have our eyes focused on the minimum wage. And so nobody will take our eyes away from that. Mm -hmm. But we know that we are in unusual times. So it's our responsibility to keep on highlighting those issues that impact our members all over the nation, no matter what it is, be it minimum wage, be it right, intimidation, and harassment in the place of work. Mm. We will continue doing that. It's our duty to keep it at the front burner of national discourse, and that we are doing. All right, Mr. Onyeka there. please stay safe. Thank you so very much for your time with us this morning. God bless you, and thank you for having me.